Pro Life Ministries, and we have uh, Elsie on the show today, and Elsie's husband will be joining us soon. But Elsie, say hello to the Torah Life audience. Uh, well, my husband and I have been together for 62 wonderful years, and we have never looked back, and God has been faithful. And my thoughts to others in anticipating marriage is that is that we come have a seat. Yeah, come sit down. My thoughts to others are is that um, come closer. She won't bite. Good. To have a meaningful relationship, we, it has to be a threefold cord is not lightly broken, and the Lord has to be in the center of it. And we had the confirmation that he had brought us together, and it's never changed. And we both had that, and I think one needs to know that for sure, who the person is that he's given you to share your life with. And I think of one thing that I told my husband, this is before he was my husband, when we were thinking about marriage, I said, I need someone that will tell me every day that he loves me. And he hasn't missed a day for 62 years. Wonderful. Now, uh, introduce yourself. You're Victor, and uh, tell us of uh, your side of the story. Uh, 62 years, and uh, you never had a fight. You say six, no, it's 61. 61 years. Uh oh. 62. Okay, no arguing now on the film. That would be. In, in August, it's going to be 62. 62. I yeah. thought you said 52. 62. Oh, 62, yeah. Okay. Uh, the only difference we have is remembering numbers. Uh, all left, left brain, right brain stuff. Like, uh, I saw in Reader's Digest that the kids say, not my kids, the kids say we like Mama to drive and Daddy to park. Well, we have, have uh, interesting, interesting uh, relationships on that side of things, but now, our, our 61 and three-fourths years has been exemplary special because when I met Elsie, she was 17, 17-ish, maybe even going on 18. She was 17, going on 18. And anyway, all 17-year-old girls are cute, but uh, I... She had these funny ideas about mission work. And then, after we got to know each other, it was over a summer. She was from Oregon, I was from Central US, I was from Indiana. She had relatives back there that she never met. She came back to meet her to meet relatives with her auntie, and she met me. We got to know each other as young people in the church. But, uh, this thing about uh, mission work, we had a good talk one night, and I went back to my dorm room in, at Purdue. My roommate hadn't been home yet from the weekend, and I was just sitting there praying. I was kind of impressed with her this time around. I said, Lord, if you can use her to be what I should be, here I am kind of like what, I didn't know the Hebrew word hineni at the time, but what uh, uh, Isaiah said, when uh, here am I, send me the one word in Hebrew is hineni. I said, here I am, well, I'm for it, if that's what you want. And that's what our life together has been built on. She was talking about missions in the early stages. We were married for seven years. Never did she push me once Let's go to the mission field. When the Lord was ready, he spoke, and away we went. I, I dropped my work at uh, the Hanford Project, where they made plutonium in the southeast corner of Washington. Dropped it and uh, went back to school, to the university to study with, um, with, with the Wycliffe Bible translators, how to reduce language to writing, the Stone Age language. There is no such thing as a primitive language. We had over a hundred endings on every verb. And anyway... Let me ask you guys this. Yeah. What would be your advice uh, to young couples that are struggling and seem to have so many differences 
and uh, they're just having a hard time. What would be your well, advice I, for them to I've restore the relationship? I've counseled some young women, middle-aged women even, in, in the marriage mode, that her husband, who's not so interested, never preached to him. Never preached to him. Or try to change it. To try to change him. Live out your life as a real witness, and we've seen that work. And uh, I didn't ever tell Elsie what we wanted anyway, what, uh, what I was thinking of those things. So, anyway. so even if you had differences, you let each other do what you wanted to do pretty much. Oh, yeah. Well, we prayed that oh, the yeah. Lord would make us one yeah. and that the Lord would give us the same vision. And so it's the spirit that has to do it and not pressures from the spouse. The only, the only hiccups we have is this male, female, left brain left brain, right brain stuff, which is incidental. It's just a matter of culturalisms, and uh, that's pretty easy if you really love each other, and we sure have. Sure. And how did the Hebraic roots, the, the switch from Christianity to Hebraic roots, did that happen together for both of you, or was that separate and one of you had to wait for the other My one? My Christianity always did have, you have to ask her for the switch because my background always did have a warm spot in my heart for Israel. I probably am, am I have some uh, Hebraic background from my grandfather who was Hungarian or he was from that area. And uh, since Sunday school and all, but we had Sunday school teachers in the Bible Belt never, never knock Israel, never say anything bad about Israel. So this was a good thing about the Anabaptist group that we came from, uh, that uh, there was a very positive thing, not so much about getting out and waving the Israeli flag, but respecting what God was doing in Israel. And what, so tell us a little about the change. Uh, uh, when well, when we were in Papua New Guinea, and Victor was translating, he began to get more and more of a deeper concept and vision of Israel and the prophetic word for Israel in the scriptures. And I was a little bit concerned at first that maybe he was going to go a little bit too far that direction and get a little bit off center or something. Now she's worse than I am. <laughs> but the Lord just showed me. Better. <laughs> I just asked the Lord and I said, if this is really from you, I want the revelation too. And the Lord gave it to me and we've never, we've always been oh, one in the spirit. In very the, much one. Things. Now how many children do you have? Four. Four. So did the children ever become uh, slow your ministry down or did you were you able to figure it out and, and still go still full steam ahead. We have four, uh, well, they're all four positive towards Israel because they're in the Bible. Our, our one son is a, the one that's the least, is he's a, a associate pastor in, 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 um, in a Ohio, in Ohio. But, but he certainly is pro-Israel. He may not go to the put the focus on it that we do, but he's pro-Israel. Another son uh, who is pro-Israel, but he's got to doing his own thing and he doesn't do that much in the direction of Israel. Our daughter, well, let me take the, the youngest son. He had hoped to become a, a pastor when he came back from New Guinea with us. That didn't work out, but he's, he's uh, very, very much on the same page as we are, though he's not doing the same things. Our daughter is a carbon copy of her father, and uh, of course her mother too in that respect, but sh uh, she has six daughters, and uh, they are in Brazil. And I, we found in my latest book, uh, uh, Genetically Modified Prophecies, there's a lot of Hebraic genetics in Latin America. and. One of my granddaughters married a full-fledged. He was he wasn't uh, he, he he wasn't. Uh, 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 He's a Brazilian. Child. How many grandchildren do you have? How many kids? How many 12. have you two produced? How many people in general? Well, there's 32 of us all together now. We got some grandchildren. Eight. I want to tell you about this. My uh, my granddaughter married uh, Marcel Ben Attar. 
Jewish name, but he was not observant. Observant was the word I was looking for. He was not observant, but he is very, very pro what we're doing now and the whole family. My daughter married, uh, I don't know if he's an eighth or sixteenth a Jew, and the genes are boiling over. <laughs> wow. And so, uh, yeah, but our grandchildren, we've got 12. And one of them is in Israel right now, in a, living in a kibbutz and learning Hebrew. Because so, so, she loves it. So, for so those people that don't know your story, basically, you both went to Papua New Guinea and uh, you helped translate the, the scriptures for them over there in their language, correct? Mm -hmm. We didn't help, we did it. You did it. <laughs> now that's a lot of work and a lot of time. And you had kids during the process, you were missions over there, and you were able to make it work and still remain married. Where today people just get divorced uh, like it's no big deal. What do you think that is? Why do you think people, do you think people don't take marriage as serious today? Do you think they care more about their, their work than their spouse? Why do you think that is, that divorce is, is so common today? Well, it's a drifting away from the Word of God. It's a cooling off from, from uh, a cooling off from what uh, what uh, the Lord had planned, and uh, yeah, it's just a matter of uh, people looking for their own thing instead of God's things. The thing is, looking for God's things in our marriage, He gives you the best, and we've never looked back. It's been, a, it's been a great, we're still on our honeymoon. That's great, that's great. And you're smiling, that's so wonderful. That's so wonderful. Well, give us your website so people can go there and see more about your ministry. Oh yeah, um, www.spim, that stands for South Pacific Island Ministries. Yeah. Spim.org. Okay, there it is. Spim.org.au, and I'll put it below the, below as well. Thank you both so much for what you're doing, and uh, everyone wants to contact them with more information about uh, Victor's books and, and their, their ministry. Uh, you do so at the address below the video here. So thank you both, and I wish you another both another 62 years <laughs> of, uh, of joy. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank All right. You. You'd be blessed too. And and you have a great beard. Thank you. And I say the number one reason most men don't have great beards is because their wives don't let him or want them to. And you truly have a blessed wife because she's smiling and you have that beard. Well, she says I have to have hair on top somewhere. That's great. <laughs> That's great. There you go. There you go. Well, you know, the way I know is, uh, well, thank you, God. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life ministries, come out of the world, 